You can gauge the seasons of the year by many things, trees and flowers, as the days draw out and in. Another almost as long running mechanism is a new COD title which signifies the shift from summer to autumn or fall if you're watching from the US. Thus we now know we are heading into the biggest gaming season as we are again summoned to duty with the difference, but as things change the more they stay the same. Now gone is the boost packs, augmented abilities and space battles and we instead return to the series roots where the most successful FPS of all time started in humanity's history. And this time World War II, the last time we saw this was World at War, the episode back when the 360 ruled the gaming landscape for multi-platform titles. This is something that is set to return at the same time this game ships with the new Xbox One S and Microsoft aims for the machine from the start. Now here I have access to my first recruitment as Private Beta on both PlayStation platforms in the Pro and Base models, so let's pick a class and stick it to them. A change or return this may be, but within the first few moments you can see Sledgehammer Games have kept things well within expectations. Locked set classes are opened up as you rank up, as are weapons, attachments, perks and icons to personalise your avatar in action. The stable mates of TDM, Domination and more are all here, but the new go-to game type has an influence of another battlefield entirely. War is just like Battlefield 1 Operation game type, as two teams of 12 here are giving a hold and defend or charge and push back order. You have to capture zones and push the other team back to the end of the map to win, or hold off the attacking force from pushing you into retreat. Now this is as good as it sounds, it forces all players to play the objective almost without choice. The campers of the game are well serviced on both sides of the forces, which can limit some games into near full on snipe offs, but after testing all modes, it is by far my favourite. Now TDM is the same as before, smaller maps with the kill or be killed attack and domination runs over the same maps but with split flags to own as you go. All modes are chosen from the main menu and games are found very quickly before the common loading times of the series kick in and unpack the boosted visuals into RAM ready for runtime. And this is where the team have improved the look and feel of the game over earlier entries. Using its three years to bring more realistic and physically approximate materials and lighting to the game. Now it's not a first for the series, but it's much better than the last entry we had in Advanced Warfare 2. Due to the army fabric, stone walls, high gloss metallic surfaces and strong lighting of the title, a clear split of material properties are evident, which convince more than most. Backing up these point and directional lights is full screen space effects in the form of reflections mixed with cube maps from the image based lighting approach it adopts. Now these run on both console versions here adding soft reflections of character models in puddles or scenery to enhance the vibrancy of the visual quality. Now we also see a mixture of billboard lighting beams through the trees that are enhanced with crepuscular rays that are of the SSR family but they still add a modern and almost serene tranquility to the intent and action of the game. Models are also treated to the same beautification, subsurface scattering on skin and the engine's long standing and great use of tessellation allows them to look very detailed up close in the real time cutscenes and pre-game lobbies. Animation rigs and routines do all seem to have been booked out from the cob library though, in terms of in-game movement, reloads, deaths and end-game celebrations, but for online competition these are par for the course and I'm sure like the overall visual quality, these will be significantly enhanced in the single player element. Along with the war sections having expandable maps that feel longer, if a little more channeled than other games. The biggest asset to the game's quality though comes from the lighting model entirely, which has always been very adaptive within the Quake 3 origins of its engine, and its new material system which brings it much closer to the now far more adopted PBR attempts of the current gen. It's not the best we have seen, but it's much better than many and up with the best in the series. I'm still a fan of Advanced Warfare's look and visual style for these types of games. I am very much looking forward to the single player hands on when I can see just how much the team have pushed this further. Now this includes the incredible per object motion blur from that game. It is very, very sparingly used here in the multiplayer, but we see mole touches of it caress across fast gun or hand movements and at times in the death rolls. The bokeh sample depth of field 
complemented with a touch of bloom, also adorns the post effect suite when zooming in and out on a scoped weapon or in the game's real time cutscenes, which I am sure will be used much more in the final story portions of the game. So in terms of the visual makeup, we see an identical quality across the board, aside the same old, same old. Resolution separates the two between this early beta. Both have a fully implemented TAA solution or temporal anti-aliasing solution that reduces the common signs of edge shimmer, sub-pixel popping at the expense of texture clarity and sharpness. And of course, this affects the base model more than the Pro. This change also carries over to the way the image is rendered and constructed. Again, I talked about this almost three years ago now. We see a reconstruction method incorporated into the title that uses the previously mentioned TAA method to enhance and improve the base resolution further by taking previous frames data in addition to current ones and injecting that into the image. Now, this is not checkerboarding per se, but a similar technique as has become the common marketing method to talk about the methods. Now this works very well and convinces in the most part that we are looking at a native presentation on the PS4, but we are indeed not. Instead, we see an almost identical path taken as Capcom used in the RE engine for its seventh entry used in the VR mode and the Xbox One version, but this appears far more consistent and accomplished in its results. It may have a dynamic solution, but I don't believe it does. I think it sits where the native resolution goes from 1920 width and a 1080 height, but actually it's coming from a 960 width and is missing half the calculation information which is all reconstructed and added from its temporal data this is again very similar to the methods we had in advanced warfare 2 last year which also had some half width counts from my tests at the time now this means that you can have points that seem muddier than others but in action concentrate on the task at hand it always looks modern and the method works well so the pro boosts this method further by increasing the base and peak of these points always keeping a 1620 height this time rather than 1080. But from a combination of more my counts, I don't see anything changing that 620 height. And it could, like I say, possibly be using a dynamic solution, but I still believe that the whole thing is being reconstructed from an injection method here, which is why we get a width of 1440 and most of the time 2880, which gives you 2880 by 1620 resolution on the Pro and 1920 by 1080 on the PS4 using this reconstruction method. Now this is across quite a few counts I've done across various sections of the game and even lower sections when the camera flips where there's not much on screen I'm still getting the half width which is why I believe we're looking at a fully temporal injected solution here and not one that's actually dynamically scaling but I stand to be corrected if the developers tell us otherwise. This leaves the Pro looking cleaner and sharper than the base model with the same low shimmer IQ that is becoming far more common now. Pretty much like pre-rendered CGI movie quality we've been watching for years. I believe we will see it used less or maybe not at all in the single player game as that can be more controlled and the sacrifice to some image clarity is always the best path when response times are of vital importance in these games. Talking of those, I have some tested figures with my own input latency test method which you can read more about on my site, link is below and on screen. Now by wiring an LED into the controller and capturing with a high speed 240 FPS camera, we can count the frames between pressing a button and it actually happening and affecting the LED attached to the screen. Now something of paramount importance in a COD game. Now from testing a mixture of reload, shoot and movement, we see a median time of 58.24 milliseconds on both models. Now this includes the TV input latency of my Sony W7 TV, which is around 12 to 20 milliseconds of lag, depending on where on the screen height you test it. Now this is very, very fast. This is a fast TV and has been calibrated correctly as per my own TV guide. So unless you have an expensive monitor, this will be the best result you can expect. Of course, the true engine level will be approximately 40 to 40 42 milliseconds mighty impressive indeed and this is why this game is so high on twitch shooters and why it feels so good to play now these figures are of course for reference as it all depends on your tv of choice and how it is configured
configured. So if you do want to improve both your image quality, your input times and your success rate in games like this and others, I suggest you check it out and also my upcoming 4K HDR version which is coming very soon. Now, a big reason for this low latency that the games are known for is the high FPS target, 60, and they've all had this with varying levels of success, and we can already see that the latest entry here has already got a very solid start and a high bar set for that indeed. 60 on both and bar some long stutters in the opening camera pan as likely it has been stressed with engine load and geometry or also could it be some CPU load for decompressing action later on after this section loads. All game types tested never get anywhere near this low level on both versions. Now no lower than a very rare mid 40 with heavy alpha effects and fire on screen. It actually comes in at an average of 59.5 on both of the consoles which means at this stage the team has have correctly compromised the small image impact to keep the action consistently smooth and blisteringly responsive. We never see any times peaking above a single frame hang of 33 milliseconds and these are always so brief and fleeting you rarely notice this whilst playing the game. You may notice it ever so slightly if you're a hardcore player but you'd be hard pressed to find this bad and it's certainly up there with the best in the COD series. Now server times are good as is finding games which we never have to wait more than a few seconds to find a match. Loading can be its longest point but this is a common trait for the game and it may also improve slightly after we come out of this beta period. Now as a peek into just how ready they are for the meat and potatoes portion of the franchise, your expectations can be high. It still looks, feels and plays like COD. Maybe slightly slower in traversal than recent entries and more like its earlier titles, but this is still a twitched base shooter and keeps the heritage high. If that will be enough to gain the market share yet again remains to be seen. This is a new and fresh look at the COD game, but it's not a reinvigoration or a reinvention. This feels, plays and is a COD title through and through, and that comes with all the pluses and minuses depending on where you sit in the market. Now, once we near release, I will be looking into that in more depth along with the Xbox One and the X versions to see what they can do at either end of this current baseline expectation. And as always, if you guys and girls enjoyed this and you like what I do here on my channel and website, then you can support me by liking and sharing where appropriate. And also, if you possibly can, support me on Patreon to help me continue my work. Leave all your thoughts and feedback below. Follow me on Twitter where you can speak to me directly. Play hard, game fast. I keep smacking in them headshots. I'll catch you on the next one. We're advancing. Protect us. Two minutes until enemy reinforcements arrive!